Now I know we're not breaking any speed records with this series, but we are crafting a highly flexible system and that takes time. In this video, we're going to set things up so we can select our items. Let's get started. Alright, now if I go into my player canvas, and I'll double click it here to center it on my screen, open it up and we'll set it active for the moment. You may remember that when we created our item slots, we had this selected panel around the outside that is supposed to show when an item selected. Somehow mine became on again, so they all look selected. So I'm just going to click that to turn the object off. And here's the beauty of prefabs. I can click the item slot itself, go to overrides and apply all, and it will make that change for everything. Now in this video, what we want to do is make it so that when we clicked on an item, it actually becomes selected with that panel turning on. The first thing that we're going to need to do for this is to head into our item slot script. Now this is the part of the script where we need to make it so that when we click on an object, it can actually sense that it's being clicked. To do this, we're going to come up here by our mono behavior, add a comma, and we're going to add I pointer click handler. Now when you first put that, it's not going to like it at all, as you can see. However, if you right click it and go to quick actions, you can actually say that you're using Unity event systems. It will add the using line at the top of your screen and it will start to clear things up, but not quite entirely yet. What I also need to do is right click this, go to quick actions, and I need to implement the interface. All this will do, while well, getting rid of the red, if you scroll down it will also add an on pointer click event data method here. Now we don't need this line right there, but essentially what this does is it is a method so that whenever the item that holds this script gets clicked, it will call what is in here. And what we want to check here is we want to check to see if the event data dot button is equal to pointer event data dot input button dot left. And then if it is left, we're going to do whatever's in there. We can then copy that. And you guessed it, we're going to add that in below, but this time add the right option. And what I just want to do right now is on here, I'm going to actually create a new method called on left click, which we'll create down below. And I'll also make one called on right click that we're not going to worry about in this video, but at least it's set up for next time. Now we just need to actually tell it what happens when the left click. So let's make a new method here. This will be a public void on left click. And in here we're just going to say what we want to happen. Now we can't actually fill this out just yet because we need some data back up at the top. I'm going to come down below my item slot here. And what I just want to do is make a reference to a public game object. And we're going to call this one our selected shader. So that's the shader we'll want to turn on. I'm also going to make a public bool and this is just going to keep track of whether or not this item has been selected. With those done we can now head down to our on left click function. First thing we want to do is make sure that our selected shader is set to be active and that that is true. This will turn on the shader and then we just want to also let it know that this item selected equals true. This script now knows the item has been selected and it knows to turn on the shader. Now while we're here I want to get rid of this error message so I'm just going to make a placeholder method for a public void called on right click. And again we won't do anything with that yet but it's ready for next time. Alright now at the moment we do need to go into our inventory canvas and take a look at one of these item slots. And where our item slot script is you'll notice that there is now a spot here for our selected shader. So I'm just going to grab my selected panel and put it in there. And then when you click on override, we're going to apply this to all of our item slots. With that done, I can now collect items and click on them to select. The only problem is, while I can select them, I can never deselect. So we're going to add that next. To do this, we're going to actually go into our inventory manager script. So because our inventory manager script has the array of all the slots, we're going to use it to make a command that will deselect all slots. So no matter what slot is selected, the inventory manager can turn them all off at once. So I'm just going to create a new method down near the bottom here. This will be a public void called deselect all slots. And the reason we made this public is because we're actually going to send the request to do this from our item slot, but we'll get to that in a moment. And all we're going to do in here is create another for loop. Remember you can type the word for and double tap tab to generate that syntax. This is just going to be our item slots dot length. And so this loop will run through all of our item slots. And all that we want it to do 
is simply for each item slot that it comes across. So we'll put I in here. We want to grab our selected shader, set active, and in this case, make it false. If we go back to our item slot now, on left click here, before we turn this one true, what we're going to do is just make a call to our inventory manager to turn all of the slots off, and then it can activate this one. But in order to talk to our inventory manager, we do need to make a reference to it. So let's pop up to the top of our script. And down below our other variables, we will make a private inventory manager script called inventory manager. I could make this public and fill a box with it, but I prefer to do that as little as possible. I find that my code runs much smoother if the scripts find their own references. And so I am going to make a start method here. And in this, we'll tell it that inventory manager is equal to, and we'll just type gameobject.find and put the name of our inventory canvas. Make sure to spell this exactly like it is in your game. And we'll tell it to get the component inventory manager. All right, with that done, we can now talk to our inventory manager. So we'll head back down to our left click. And right at the top here, we're going to go inventory manager dot deselect all slots. So now when you left click on something, it will tell the inventory manager to deselect all slots. Then it will turn this slot on. So while this will turn off the selected shader, we also need to let the item slots know that they are no longer active. And so we're going to just do item slot, this item selected equals false. So now in Unity, I can click on my item to select it. And when I click somewhere else, it will unselect the item I had and select the new slot. It's working nicely. Next up, we want to get our item image and description displaying over on the right, but this video is already getting a little long, so we'll save that for the next one. See you then.